today I have a step-by-step -step tutorial for you on how to paint high gloss furniture. I picked up this little dresser from the ReStore and I did a lot of research. I wasn't sure if it was Formica, if it was Malamine, if it was laminate, and I found out some interesting things that I will share and explain in the layman's or most simplest terms I possibly can. So stick with me. I'll share what paint to use, the prep, and a whole lot more. Just let me get set up and I'll be right back. I found this glossy four drawer small dresser at my local restore selling for $35. It said $35. I think they actually charged me $30. <laughs> when I got it home, I started inspecting it. And as you can see, it's a very high gloss piece. I mean, this is very, very glossy. I don't know what kind of top coat is on this laminate, but it's a super high gloss piece. Um, and you can tell that it's a laminate because when you look at the back, you actually see that there is a piece stuck onto another piece of wood. So therefore, I know that it's not a solid piece of wood because something's been stuck on top of another piece of wood. So this is a dead giveaway that it's a laminate piece. A simple definition of laminate, or of course it's pertaining to laminate furniture in this case, is to cover a faux wood grain with a protective material. Um, and here you can see they did just that because on this side, on the bottom part, after I flipped the dresser up, you can tell that it's like a picture of a wood grain and underneath it looks like it's peeling and it looks like there's pressed cardboard and then that pressed cardboard is actually attached to the wood. If this was a solid piece of furniture, the wood grain would not be peeling off. Another telltale sign of a laminate piece of furniture is when the grain looks too perfect because if you look at this piece, the grain pattern repeats on all the drawers and on all the side, and it just looks too perfect. If this was a real piece of wood uh, and wood furniture, the grain would not be identical on every drawer. The steps I took for this glossy dresser were repairs first. Uh, a few of the drawers just needed a little tightening with some tight bond glue. Uh, then I filled the hardware holes and I took out my DeWalt sander with an 80 grit sandpaper and sanded the entire dresser down. Now this is a good scuff, <laughs> it's more than a scuff sand actually, and it had to be because there were some scratches on the top and there were actually some bubbles on the top that I needed to sand down as well. Now, if this piece had been totally perfect, let's say a totally glossy, perfect piece of furniture and I didn't even need to sand down or fill any of the hardware holes and there was no scratches, no bubbling, nothing, I could have actually forgone the scuff sanding and used a bonding primer such as um, Slick Stick from Dixie Belle. Uh, that bonds to plastic, it bonds to glass, it bonds to tile, and it does bond to uh, melamine or slick surfaces for furniture. Uh, however, because this was uh, a piece that did need <laughs> some imperfections sanded out, I decided to sand and use uh, BIN shellac based primer and the reason for this is because it has the stain blocking element because once I sanded through this glossy surface and some of the wood started peeking through I really wanted a bonding primer but also one that had a really really good uh, bleed through stain blocking element to it as well. So here I am rolling on the Bin Shellac based primer. I call it Bin, but it's B-I-N. <laughs> I don't know why I say that in every single video. I have a full tutorial on how to apply this uh, B-I-N Shellac based primer, which um, 
I'll actually add to the end credits so you can go take a peek if you'd like. But I like applying it with a foam roller. Uh, usually two coats does the job and this stuff is phenomenal because it dries so fast and you will be able to see once the bleed through is covered. So if you put a first coat on and notice that there's still a little bleed through beading through, you know it requires a second coat. And nine times out of 10, once you put a second coat on it and it stays perfectly white, you're gonna be 100% assured that no bleed through will rear its ugly head once you paint and top coat. So after I did my first coat of primer, and then did all my wood fill corrections. I gave it a good sanding, and now here are the drawers back in my workshop ready for the second coat of BIN shellac base primer. I just took a tack cloth and wiped off all the excess dust and applied a second coat of primer, which is sufficient. Everything was smooth, everything looked all even, and now it's ready for paint actually almost ready for paint. Once the second coat of primer is all dried and sanded down, I actually perform a scratch test. And this is just where I take my nail and scratch and make sure that the primer has bonded with the surface 100%. I do this on all my glossy pieces because you really wanna make sure that you have a good foundation before you do start painting. I did a short video on that earlier this week which I'll um, add in the cards or at the end or whatever, so you can go take a peek. It's all of two minutes, but it shows how I do the scratch test, and hopefully it'll be helpful to anyone who is painting a glossy piece and wants 100% assurance that their paint will stick. I found these mid-century modern legs in my inventory and they're repurposed off another dresser that I did a few years back. I'm so glad that I kept them. Uh, they have brass little bottom feet. So what I'm doing is I'm painting the base of them. Uh, you can see that I've wrapped the brass area in green painter's tape. And check out this color. It's the first time I'm using it. It's conch silk all in one mineral paint by Dixie Bell. And I am in love, I have to say. And it reminded me that we used to have a conch shell in uh, our bathroom way, way, way back when I was a kid. And I used to love picking it up and listening to the ocean inside it. Um, but this color just brought back great memories and it's just beautiful. So here I am playing with the flow in my uh, spray gun. And if you do use a spray gun and you have control of how much paint actually comes out and the shape of the spray, when you're spraying the inside of your pieces or a lip of a piece, um, it's a really good idea to adjust that. Uh, then you don't get overspray everywhere as you're not wasting paint. Uh, and it's, I just find it's so helpful to be able to adjust and it just makes for such a cleaner, better job. So speaking of paint, a common question I always get asked and that I wondered about for the longest time is what type of paint to use on high gloss furniture, whether it's for mica, whether it's malamine, uh, any sort of glossy laminate, what's the best paint to use? Should you use chalk paint? Should you use mineral paint, latex, oil? Um, an enamel, an acrylic. The answer to that is all of the above. It doesn't matter what kind of paint you use so long as you've done the prep correctly. So if you've given your high gloss piece a good scuff sanding, used a very good bonding primer, have done your scratch test and you know that the bonding primer has adhered to your piece, you can paint over it in whatever type of paint you like. Here's a quick tip when um, spray painting your furniture, rather than masking off all the drawers, uh, what I like to do is just take a piece of cardboard, 
put it along the lip and then spray. So the cardboard actually blocks any overspray from going into the drawers or going onto the sides or onto the back, as you can see here. Um, and I have to say, sorry about the lighting. You know what? I got this ring light and I still haven't figured it out. Sometimes I have it on too low. Sometimes I have it on too high. I know in this clip, it's all blown out. So you can't even really see the spray paint going onto the drawer but hopefully you get the idea. I found four of these old school metal handles that were in my stash for probably seven, eight years now. Um, I got them off an old, heavy, dated dresser, um, and I just kept looking at them thinking, what am I going to use them on? What am I going to use them on? Well, finally, I found a piece to use them on, and they're made in Canada. Yay! <laughs> uh, so what I did was I gave them a really good scuff uh, with, I think I used a 120, I used a 120 grit sandpaper and I just scuffed up all the metal and then I used Dixie Bell's gold gemstone mousse and this stuff is phenomenal. It's like liquid gold. It goes on so beautifully and it really made a huge difference in how these handles looked. I think the gemstone mousse plays really, really well with the brass on the bottom of these MCM uh, little legs that I put on. So I installed the hardware, I installed the legs, and it came together beautifully. Here is the before, and here's the after. I have to say, I'm in love with this little piece. I love the color. I love the gold paired with the conch. It just looks beautiful. I can't wait to hear what you guys think. I hope you found this video tutorial helpful. If so, consider subscribing down below. I also love hearing from you guys. So if you have any tips, tricks, suggestions, or you just wanna drop by to say hi, uh, I'd love to hear from you down below. Also, I would love to see you over at salvagedinspirations.com where I have over 400 furniture painting tutorials teaching you how to make your furniture beautiful. Until next time, stay safe, have a super day, and see you again soon. Bye guys.